Hey everyone and welcome back to Get Indie Gaming and to our regular overview of 10 of the best looking indie games coming out this week, October 26th through to November 1st. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and on that, let's get started on this week's rundown. Up first and at this week's number 10, Pacer has been a long time coming which feels kind of ironic for such a fast paced looking racing game. While there are many like it, we're thinking this one might be one of the better tributes to the anti-gravity behemoth that was Wipeout, which those of you out there of a certain age will remember putting in hours into this one back in 1995 on the original PlayStation. If that's you, let us know down in the comments and also if you think you might be tempted to pick this one up to compare and contrast. Interestingly, the developer of Pacer has a number of former Wipeout members working on the team with cold storage also being involved for the production of the soundtrack. We're super hopeful this one plays out as well as we suspect it might, with it coming to PC via Steam, the PlayStation 4 and also the Xbox One this October the 29th. It all started when I found this book. What the f- Wait, are you actually talking back to me? Up next and at number 9. Gibbous, a Cthulhu adventure first came out towards the end of the summer last year and this week it gets a port onto the Nintendo Switch. We really enjoyed this one on the PC, particularly the hand-painted art style which uses traditional frame-by-frame -frame animation techniques throughout. It's sublimely beautiful, as is the overall story, which involves the search and discovery of the Necronomicon from the stories and tales of Lovecraft. Along the way you'll discover a wonderfully cynical cat, more than 60 different fully voiced characters and over 12,000 lines of dialogue. Another high point is how the team of three developers based out of Transylvania were able to hit the right notes in terms of the game's humour. That's something so very easy to get wrong in any type of video game. Of course, like everything that's somewhat subjective, although if this is new to you and you fancy something that little bit different to play this week on the Switch, you can pick this one up when it launches on October the 28th. At number 8 and coming out in early access on PC VR systems on the 28th, Groove Runner caught our eye with its garish and vibrant colour schemes. As you can tell from the trailer, it's a rhythm based shooting and blocking game that for now at least has 15 different songs and 4 difficulty levels. Also it comes with a song editor which allows players to create and play custom material. The team behind Groove Runner are looking for a full launch at some point towards the first half of next year with the time spent in early access being used to finalise the gameplay and tidy up the associated algorithms. Change. The only constant in our existence arguably the foundation of our global fascination with horror. After all, what is horror without the threat of mutation, death or the cosmic unknown? Moving swiftly on to this week's number 7, we have Transient. Long-time fans or viewers of the channel will probably recall we don't tend to feature too many horror-driven games. They tend not to be really our thing, although there are a few things going on here that have tempted us to take a quick peek from hiding behind the sofa. This comes from the creators of Canarum and Darkness Within series and Transient is set within a distant post end of day scenario in what's described in the press kit as a Lovecraftian cyberpunk mashup. You play as Randolph Carter and you'll dive deeply into an obscure and dystopian world all the while moving back and forth between the real and artificially created environments. There's something more here than just simple jump scares and like many of the other games out this week, it comes to the PC on October the 28th with console launches expected at some point in 2021. At this week's number 6 and launching in early access October 27th, Hammerting sees you manage a dwarven mining colony all within a region of unexplored mountains of Mara. As you might expect, this one sees you establishing and managing a clan of dwarves. You start from a humble beginning before delving deeper to find the most powerful materials. Expected to be in early access for between 6 to 12 months, it launches with what the developers are calling a huge procedurally generated map with plenty of crafting, base building, exploration and combat. 
The time here in Early Access will be used to refine the title, test out new features, all the while working with the community towards a finished product. Moving onwards and at this week's number 5, Star Drift Evolution comes at us on the back of a recent really rather great art of rally and comes to PC via Steam again in Early Access on October the 30th. Said to be a minimalistic racing game, this one's all about taking the corners as fast as you're able which here means plenty of power slides. While we've yet to play it, we suspect this one will be really heavily driven with pure driving and sliding physics based mechanics and we're thinking this could be super enjoyable and a little bit challenging. We're always fans of these kind of driving games and much prefer them to let's say those that are more of a simulation type of experience and we're really excited to see how this one plays out in 4 player local split screen and 2 player online multiplayer. With 30 or more cars and 60 or so tracks, this could be quite the driving surprise of the year. Hurry to the tower in the forest. Master Mayfair has a surprise for you. Coming up next, we have Ocean Horn 2, a former Apple Arcade exclusive action adventure RPG which comes out this week on October 28th onto the Nintendo Switch. Set a thousand years before the events of the original, this time players will embark on a magical journey across the vast world of Gaia, brimming with mythology and lore, all within what's touted as an epic main quest with 20 or more hours of gameplay. We had half an hour or so recently with this one within the Apple Arcade, and we think it should find a really good home and a decent fan base on the Switch. Aside from the main quest, there are dozens and dozens of side quests to complete, with plenty of testing boss battles and clever puzzling sections. The handcrafted graphics are also a real joy, as is the soundtrack in what feels quite the compelling action RPG experience. At number 3, Legends of Eternal promises a 2D single player action adventure game where you set out having returned home from fishing to find your house destroyed and your parents missing. While we're hardly short of these kind of games, we're thinking we can make some space here for this one. The graphics look really rather beautiful with everything here being handcrafted with support for up to a 4K resolution. As could be expected, you piece together the tale here by way of completing various missions, exploring the in-game environments and besting enemies and bosses. While you begin with a fishing pole for a weapon, you collect better equipment as you progress, also collecting orbs or ether, which can trigger your character's special abilities. With five different difficulty levels, including the super rare permadeath option where the game ends upon a single death, Legends of Eternal is out this October 30th on the Switch, PC, PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. At number 2, we have visually one of the best looking games to come out over the past few months, particularly at 4K resolution where the lighting and weather effects are particularly exquisite. Ghost Runner drops on the 27th, and having spent a good number of hours with it already, this neon soaked cyberpunk drenched affair really is shaping up rather nicely. Its speed running, parkour, scrapping really puts us in mind of such games as Mirror's Edge and perhaps the Crackdown series, although that being said, there's something about Ghost Runner that in our short time with it feels crispier and more enjoyable than anything quite like it. The fluidity of the wall riding together with the hack and slash style combat feels so really well judged. We're thinking however this one is likely to better suit those with a deft set of platforming skills. In places it is rather tough, although the difficulty is offset by the use of plentiful respawn points and so far, death pretty much has brought us back to play where we left off. Based on what we've seen from other sources, we're around halfway through our playtime and we're eagerly awaiting to see where Ghost Runner ends up. You can pick this one up now as this video airs on PC, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch. At this week's number one we have Carto, a puzzle game at heart and one that comes with a truly engaging tale about discovery, friendship and exploration. The puzzles are never particularly taxing and you use a mechanic whereby you move the map and environment and as needed within each particular section to solve them. To be honest though, the real joy of playing this one doesn't come from these puzzles, but from the interaction you have with the cast of NPCs. The dialogue comes from Nick Sutter who many of you will know from games such as Bloodroots and Celeste, 
The story and how the narrative all fits together is so very well done, and while relatively short coming in at 7 or so hours, it feels considerably meatier than you might expect. Carto is a treat. It's perfect to unwind with at the end of the day, and can be found on PC and all of the usual consoles. There we go, that's it for this week's new launch rundown. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you've yet to do so with all of those notification bells turned on, so to never miss out on any of our indie game videos. Either way, many thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you here again for another indie video.